792, 793, 794, 795, it just increments. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. so what I do is I make sure that this number is always written on my program. Event one, heat one was stored under race number 795. That's smart. Because even now, if you make a mistake on event and heat, at the high-tech computer, above the button where they click get times, there's a little button called race. And when they click it, it says, what race would you like to get? Oh, and what and you, you key in you is this that. number. Oh, cool. Now you use that for all sorts of things. You use it when your console operator makes a mistake and doesn't press the button. No problem, I'll get my race number instead. Because you stored four races, as event one, heat one, but they all have different race numbers. So no problem. Recovered. It doesn't say it on there, only on the tape. Only on the tape. So we could have recovered it had we known enough to know. The other thing I do is what happens when you combine heat? Right, so I've got two 10 and under 100 yeah. meter flies and two girls. Eight, six and seven are going to now be combined. Maybe even event numbers. Event six and seven. We're going to swim them together. Yeah, how do you do that? Well, on the console, you got to pick which one you're running. Am yeah. I running six or seven? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter. I'll pick the seven. Okay. But on the computer, they're going to try and get results for event six. How do they do that? Look at the race. They do it by race number. And what happens? Four results come in, but you ignore two of them. Because in event six, you only had two swimmers. But you swam it with four swimmers in the water. So when you get by race number, you get results for four swimmers. But it matches up the two that matter and it throws away the other two. And then you go to the next event and you pull the same race number again and it gives it to the other two swimmers and throws the other half you away. Say this again. Yeah. So, the scenario is event six, heat one, okay, only has two swimmers. So I'm going to put them in lane two and lane three. Yeah. Event seven, heat one, only has two swimmers. So I'm going to put them in lane four and lane five. Yeah. Okay? And I'm going to swim this according to the console as event seven, heat one. Okay? But all of this is going to be stored under a race number. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Now when you go to get this from the computer, the computer either gets by this identifier or this identifier. Mm -hmm. But the computer wants to get times for these guys. And in most pools what happens is your poor operator types them in. I think that's what we do. But you don't need to. Yeah, now that I'm Because they're both stored under race number 797. So what you do is you go to this in Meet Manager and you get this race number. And it's gonna pop up in warning. The warning's gonna say, but I've got four times. Are you sure you wanna do this? Yeah, I'm sure. And it's going to pull in these two swimmers and throw those two away. Because there's nobody in that event. Then you're going to advance to event 7, heat 1. You're going to get this rate number again. It's going to give you the same error. But wait, I've got four times. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. It's going to assign those and it's going to discard the other two. So with two clicks, you keyed in a combined event with no manual entry whatsoever. You don't have to add the names to the next one? No. Because oftentimes that's a pain. If the events were set up separate genders, girls and boys, you can't put a girl in a boys event. So what do you do? Yeah. You go and reconfigure the event to be mixed gender, and then you're doing setup, and you know, oh, it's a pain. Yeah. I'm new at recording sport too, so. So knowing how to do that, knowing that's saves an you a ton of time. Is nice.